What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we are checking out the infamous Crate Blue Doo Doo. Let's do it. Hope you guys are doing great out there today. As I said, we are taking a look at the crate Blue Doo, Blue Voodoo 60. I can't even say Blue Voodoo anymore because Blue Doo Doo is just too much fun. If this is your first time here at my channel, what I do is I take awesome or hated high gain amplifiers, overdrives, cabinets, pickups. I record them with a simple SM57 setup and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E-Standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and dudes who love to stir up shit on the internet, you're in the right place. If you like the video, hit the like button on the way out. Consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. All right, guys, so this amp has long been regarded as like one of the worst tube amps ever made. I remember seeing a few of these in my local music store, World of Music, and every time I'd see them, I'd, I'd always be curious about them. And I would ask the guys who worked there and they would be like, they're garbage. Don't even turn it on. It's not worth your time. So I have gone you know, 10 years being very curious about this amp. Every time you would read about them on the forums, people would talk about them breaking down and just sounding terrible and buzzy. And I just, you know what? I had to try it for myself. So last year, this head and the V30 loaded Crate Blue Voodoo cabinet came up on Craigslist about 45 minutes for me for 380 bucks. So I said, why not? I will go out, I'll grab the half stack. I got it back home, I plugged it in, I was really surprised. Now, the buzziness, yeah, the buzziness is there. I get that, I totally get that complaint. But otherwise, the amp does not sound bad, guys. It's a little tubby in the low end, which I have a very carefully curated group of uh, boosts here in order to show you how to fix that because you can actually turn that tubby low end into a really punchy and percussive low end on this thing. And overall, I, I just don't think it's, I don't think it's nearly as bad as everybody makes it out to be. I think it's an amp that I would use live just to prove a point, to be completely honest. I would use this amp live for one of my bands just to show that they're not as bad as everybody thinks. And with some, you know, with some careful cab and guitar selection and pedal selection, I mean, I have to do that with my Mesa rectifier. I have to make sure that I select the right cab and pick up and boost in order to get it to sound the way that I want to sound. Well, this is kind of the same thing. Once you kind of put all those pieces of the puzzle together, it sounds pretty good. So that intro clip that you guys heard, I was using my Gibson Les Paul Studio with a Voodoo Custom Pickups Oculus in the bridge. We had the Electric Eye Mud Killer Boost Engage, which sounds killer for muddy amps. You see what I did there? I'm smart. But yeah, that boost is really good at cleaning up the, you know, kind of sloppier low end on some amps. I really am, am starting to enjoy that boost a lot. So we're gonna live on the gain channel here. There's no reason to go to anything else. I'm gonna pull everything back to noon, as I usually do. We're gonna leave the master where it's at, and I'm gonna turn that gain down to nine o'clock, turn the boost off, and let's see how this bad boy sounds. Gotta turn it on first. Very bright, harsh, scratchy, not good like that. One of the things with this amp that you have to do is you have to carefully balance the highs and the presence. A lot of people like to run this amp with the presence all the way off. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm in a band situation, um, I might do that. But here in the room, I like to dial the actual high frequency control or the EQ control on the uh, channel EQ here. I'm having a really hard time with words. But I like to dial the highs back to kind of tame that because not only does that bring the highs back and make the amp less harsh, but it also kind of fills out some of the mids on the amp, which can be lacking unless you have them pushed pretty high. So let's hear it again with the highs pulled back. Let's push those mids up a little bit and the low end just a tad.
All right, so let's pull that gain up. I think that that's gonna increase our volume because right now we're pretty quiet compared to what we were on that opening clip. So as you can hear, uh, we're already very saturated. Let's turn that presence up to kind of get some top end sizzle out of this thing. We're almost there. Let's get a little bit more mid, a little bit more low end. And even as it's set right there, the low end is not all that tubby. Um, it's really, it hits a point on this EQ dial where it just comes on. Like it's like no low end, no low end, kind of low end, and then all of it. Just that little adjustment, that's where it, where it really comes on. So now we're gonna be in Flub City. Kinda has like a rectifier thing going on. Let's pull those mids back. All right, so that's gross. Um, let's turn presence up a little bit more. Definitely not my preferred tone. Let's pull that bass back just a little bit. And then right there, we're kind of anemic again. Right there should be a good balance point. Not really. Definitely not a tone I would shoot for, but I mean, it's, it's okay enough on its own. Let's pull those mids back up. All right, so yeah, let's pull those mids way up because that's usually how I run it, to be completely honest. So that's it for the amp with no boost in front of it. Let's kick on the mud killer and let's hear how that makes this thing sound. Okay, immediately we've got a lot more mids coming from the mud killer pedal and it's a lot tighter. So let's pull that bass up just past that, that flub threshold. And just like that, we're in a punchier place with a super tight bass response. Let's pull that bass up even more. All right, so now you can kind of hear that buzziness going on. Let's pull the gain back. This amp sounds way better, guys, than it's given credit for. I'll tell you right now. Like I said, get the right boost in front of it, right cabinet. We're in a diesel cab with vintage 30s. This is even kind of a darker cab, which benefits this amp because it can be very bright on the top end if you don't carefully dial the top end frequencies. So let's try the Fortin 33. This is a boost I tend to not like on most amps, but on this one, it's a little bit noisy, but it, it sounds pretty, pretty good. So it does still have that 33 kind of quacky little frequency going on, right? Uh, let's dial the mids back up and the highs back down. Okay, 
Okay, so that sounds rad, right? Let's turn the Fortin off. Let's try the Peeper's Dirty Tree on the Dirty Tree setting. That sounds awesome. Like I said, guys, just choose the right boost and it's gonna fix a lot of the problems, a lot of the things that people don't like about this amp. Lastly, let's try the duality red channel. The red channel on the duality is both of these boosts stacked. <laughs> You want to talk about mids. Let's pull the mids back a little bit and up the treble just a tad. I actually think that that is a little bit too much for this amp, so we're going to turn that one off. I'm going to grab a drop C guitar. We'll mess around on the amp for a second and call it a day, but yeah, you can easily get some good tones out of this with the right boost and right guitar. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun, truthfully. Okay guys, I've got my Schecter Solo 2 Apocalypse guitar and drop C. It's got the stock Apocalypse pickups. We are going to play the amp without a boost for a second and drop C, then we'll try a couple boosts out and we'll call it a day. <laughs> All right, guys, here it is with no boost. Kind of uninspiring. I've got the bass basically just where uh, it really starts to come on because otherwise, if you turn it down even just a tad, it just it sucks all the low and low mid frequencies out of it. It even pulls some of the volume out of it. So it sounds tighter and a little brighter like that, but it, it's got no balls whatsoever. It's got no low end push at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull that gain back again. We're gonna kick on the electric eye mud killer and I'm actually gonna turn the comp switch on so this will compress the front end a little bit more. Sounds massively different. Let's get that low end back in the mix. And just like that, it sounds really good. Turn that bass up. I'm sorry, those are the mids. Turn that bass up. Wow, okay, so that sounds rad. Let's try the 33 again. All right, so Fort and 33. I don't like that as much because it's harder to kind of fine tune all of the frequencies that are going on. It sucks out too much low end, it adds too much upper mid and kind of makes it just kind of which I'm not a fan of. Let's try the Peeper's Dirty Tree.
That one sounds really, really good. We're gonna leave it there. I'm gonna play one or two more riffs and we'll call it a day, but uh, that sounds rad. That's, it's very aggressive, very tight, but still sounds incredible. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed it and it shed some light on this amp and how to really take it from a mediocre sounding amp to a really great sounding amp for high gain metal, modern stuff. It can work for thrash. Really, it's just, uh, you know, the way, the what, what you pair it with as far as the drive, the guitar, the cabinet will make a huge difference. I was really liking the sounds that I was getting out of it today. Uh, for an amp that generally costs, you know, between $200 and $350 used, depending on the condition and where you find it, it's, it's kind of hard to beat in today's market. You used to be able to get like 5150s for 400 bucks and get these for 200, and I would take the 5150 all day over it still, but now that 5150s cost an astronomical amount, 6505s are 700 bucks, triple X's are 700 bucks, this amp for $300 is a great deal in the high gain department. So yeah, let me know down in the comments what you guys thought. What did you hear on your end that I wasn't hearing on mine? I'm always curious to see how you guys hear these things and I'll meet you down there to talk about it. Down in the description of this video are all my support links that help this channel grow, including my Sweetwater affiliate link. Get yourself something nice from Sweetwater. I get a little kickback, it helps me out. My Patreon, Facebook group, Discord server. I'm always trying to grow the community around this channel. Thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button on the way out. Consider subscribing. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time.